Hi, Dr. Olivia Joseph here. Today we are going to talk about the benefits and some concerns if you take probiotics. So currently probiotics are the most doctor recommended supplement that there is. Um, it's also one of the most common supplements that people put themselves on. And what you need to understand is not all probiotics are created equally and there's actually some contraindications to taking probiotics that I wanna make you aware of. So I have some notes here that I'm gonna be going over with you. So what are probiotics? They're good bacteria. And in theory, if you have enough good bacteria, it'll keep the bad bacteria in check. Now that's a theory and I'm gonna explain to you why. Now before we go any further, understand, I recommend probiotics all day long to my patients. And I also recommend probiotics at all ages. I mean, I will give probiotics to babies when indicated. Now, when are they indicated? So the one thing I want you to understand is that you're not gonna get enough good bacteria in your gut by eating yogurt. Yogurt typically contains at most about 100 million bacteria. And if you're gonna take probiotic supplementation, you need to be closer to 15 billion bacteria. Even in kids, babies I'll use smaller amounts, but even in my own children, I give them five to 10 billion bacteria daily. And I personally take a minimum of 15 billion bacteria daily. So you understand in yogurt, you're getting 100 million typically at best. Now, another problem with yogurt is it's made from dairy and dairy is in the top two most highly reactive and highly inflammatory foods. So if you have a dairy sensitivity and you're trying to eat yogurt to get probiotics, probably not the best option. Now they do make yogurt from coconut milk, almond milk, and even soy milk, but again, Yogurt is not your best source of probiotics, as you, as you can tell. My other biggest qualm or problem with yogurt is virtually all yogurt is sweetened with sugar, which is bad for your good bacteria in your gut. Sugar feeds the bad guys. So you're gonna create a higher bad bug overgrowth by eating sugar in general. So before you get too upset, let's talk about ways to really build up the good bacteria so the bad bacteria can stay in check. So taking a probiotic. Another problem that I have is the number one gastroenterologist recommended probiotic, which you can buy at Walgreens, Walmart, places like that, contains one billion bacteria, one billion. And again, if you look at the ingredients, what's one of the ingredients? Sugar. Why would you be mixing sugar with beneficial bacteria? They contradict each other, they go against each other. So it's very important that you take enough bacteria and also the strains of bacteria is important and here's why. There is something that I see more commonly now than I ever have 13 years in practice. And it's called SIBO, which stands for Small Intestinal Bacterial Overgrowth. Now, SIBO is not the same thing as a yeast overgrowth, but oftentimes when you have a yeast overgrowth, you have a small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Now, with a yeast overgrowth, if you're treating it with medication, you have to use antifungals. With a bacterial overgrowth, you have to use certain types of antibiotics. So I refer my patients to a gastroenterologist I work with and he does a SIBO test on them. It's like a breathalyzer test and what you're measuring is methane gas. If methane gas is present, you have an overgrowth of small intestinal bacteria. And if you have an overgrowth of small intestinal bacteria, you have to avoid any probiotics containing acidophilus which is the number one strain of bacteria you find in probiotics. So if you think you might have an overgrowth of these bad bugs, acidophilus is not in your best interest. I will not put my patients on acidophilus until I've treated them for dysbiosis. And what dysbiosis means is a bad bug overgrowth. And that can be an overgrowth of yeast, or that could be an overgrowth of bacteria in the small intestine. So I will only give my patients with a yeast overgrowth or a bacterial overgrowth, a probiotic called Saccharomyces boulardii. It's abbreviated S, 
Bilardi. And with Bilardi, you don't have to use high, high doses. I typically only use about 5 billion, 10 billion max of this Bilardi because Bilardi is technically not a bacteria. It's technically a form of yeast. So why would you want to give people with bad bug overgrowth yeast? Because this yeast is like Pac-Man and it goes in and it starts eating up and engulfing the bad guys. But what I'm doing with my patients that I know have an overgrowth of small intestinal bacteria or yeast is I'm putting them on natural antifungals and natural antimicrobial, antibacterial, and antiparasitic agents such as berberine, oil of oregano, thyme, olive leaf extract. I'm using these antifungals to kill the bad bugs that are in the gut. When I'm doing that, I'm giving them this Bilardi bacteria to eat up the die-off that occurs. And die-off is exactly what it sounds like. The bad guys die, and when they die, they release a toxin. And that toxin is air, it's gas. It can make you bloated, it can make you nauseous. It can create rashes on your skin that look like hives. It can cause sharpshooting intestinal pain. And that's not a reaction to anything other than it's these bad bacteria and yeast yeast dying off in your small intestine. And when it dies off, if you're using this Bilardi bacteria, it's going to eat it up like Pac-Man. And sometimes if people are really uncomfortable, then I'll have them get some activated charcoal to reduce the uncomfortable bloating and some of the symptoms that they're experiencing. So what I want you to understand is before you just start popping probiotics because you hear of the good bacteria, be careful you're not taking a probiotic that has sugar in it. And if you think you're getting enough beneficial bacteria from yogurt, you're not getting that much. Plus, yogurt has sugar in it. So combining sugar and probiotics is, is not the best idea. They don't go together. Sugar's going to feed the bad guys, while this good bacteria is not going to get a chance to build up if you have a high amount of bacterial or yeast overgrowth within your small intestine. So if you suspect any of this, get a test. How you test for SIBO is a breath test. Um, and you can call around many gastroenterologists do this test. I work with a gastroenterologist who does this testing on my patients. There's a lot of different ways to test for yeast overgrowth. What I do is I look for antigens in the bloodstream. So I do a candida albicans antigen screening when I do food allergy testing on my patients. And that's how I know that, hey, it's okay to put this patient on a probiotic or it's okay, it's a good idea to put this patient on a probiotic that has um, some acidophilus bacteria in it if it comes back negative. But if it comes back positive, I know I have to treat that patient using Bilardi and some anti natural antibacterial and antifungal agents before I ever consider putting them on regular probiotics. Now, understand a lot of people lose their good bacteria from taking antibiotics, but it's also from eating food and drinking water that has high amount of antibiotics. So antibiotics are often fed to animals when they're sick. Antibiotics are in our water system, so if you're not using reverse osmosis or really good filtration system, you're getting antibiotics on a daily basis, even if you don't take them, by eating meat that has antibiotics in it, by uh, drinking water that has antibiotics, antibiotics in it as well. So you see why these overgrowths of these bad bacteria and yeast are so common. It's not just from taking antibiotics. It's from having food allergies, food sensitivities, but drinking water or eating animals that have been treated with antibiotics disrupt the flora as well. A lot of medications disrupt flora as well, such as oral contraceptives and birth control. And that's probably the most common medication I see women taking today is some type of hormone therapy and oral contraceptives do disrupt the good bacteria and promote a bad bacterial overgrowth in your gut. Without a healthy gut, you cannot be healthy because your immune cells live in your gut. When I have a patient who develops autoimmune disease out of the blue, I'm testing their gut to find out what disrupted their immune system in their gut that caused this autoimmune disease all out of the blue to manifest. When I see people with chronic inflammation, skin rashes, eczema, psoriasis, bloating that doesn't go away when they take probiotics, digestive enzymes, or when they eliminate gluten or dairy from their diet, you have to do some testing to find out, is there too much bad? So when you take the good, 
it's not doing anything or it's even feeding the bat even more. So I hope you enjoyed this information on probiotics and continue to follow me. There's a lot more information to come on functional testing, dietary and supplement recommendations from a functional medicine standpoint. Thank you.